We heard a lot today about what we've been doing so far with PSA-based screening and aggressive treatment. And, and my take on it, and by the way, I was the principal investigator of the PLCO cancer screening trial, and I thought some of the comments today were kinder than many that I've heard before. <laughs> no matter how you slice and dice it, it's not good enough. I think it does reduce a man's chance of dying of prostate cancer, but not enough. And, and if you screen a, a whole population in an absolute percent reduction, it's only 0.6%. So for the average man in the United States, if he has a 3% chance of dying of prostate cancer without screening, and you reduce it by 20%, you're only reducing his chance down to 2.4%. There's still a lot of men dying of prostate cancer. And as one of the questioners mentioned earlier, and he was spot on in my mind, most of the benefit occurs when we screen men who are young and they're healthy. And I'm gonna come back to that theme a little bit later. And, and so there are a lot of good things about screening for prostate cancer. But as some of the speakers have said, there's also some bad things about the way we've been screening for prostate cancer. And that is that it results in a significant risk of overdiagnosis. You know, there's more than six times as many diagnoses as deaths, and that's been going on for 20 or 30 years. There's a significant risk of overtreatment. You know, in, in the European screening trial, which showed this 20% reduction in mortality, to prevent one man from dying of prostate cancer, 48 men would have needed to have been diagnosed and treated. There's a lot of those other 47 men who probably are getting unnecessarily treated, and that's associated with significant human cost and significant economic costs. So we have to, in my judgment, do a better job. Next slide. And um, Dr. Carter sort of mentioned this study. You know, since we introduced PSA in the late 1980s, they now estimate that there were 1.3 million more men told that they had prostate cancer than would have ever been aware that they had prostate cancer. Next slide. <coughs> And so in 1985, prostate represented 19% of cancers among men in the United States. With the ambitious screening you're doing, you can see we've raised the incidence to now where it's 28% of all cancers in the United States. Next slide. And this was mentioned uh, in the previous panel. You know, we pick up the phone every day as urologists and tell a man who had a biopsy two or three days prior to that, we say, gee, unfortunately, we found some prostate cancer, and we try to soft pedal it. We try to say, look, it's a small cancer, it's only in one of the pieces, it, it, it doesn't look like it's that aggressive, so on and so forth. And, and then we hang up the phone and say, come and visit with me tomorrow and we'll talk face to face. This is a study from Sweden where men were diagnosed with prostate cancer, and you can see within one week of being told they had prostate cancer, five-fold increased chance of having a major heart attack within one week. Other cardiovascular uh, events were also raised. So, so the doctors don't mind it that much, but the patients sure do. Next slide. And a man's chance of committing suicide went up 2.6 times within a month or two of being told he had prostate cancer. So I think it's almost irresponsible for us to do this mass screening, find tons and tons of prostate cancer, and inflict this kind of anxiety, which for many men is misplaced, not for the men in this room, and I'm gonna to get to that, but for many, many men, that anxiety is misplaced. Next slide. And that's why if you look at all the professional organizations, there are some that recommend against screening. You can see it here, next slide. There are some that take a more nuanced approach like the American Urologic Association. We need to inform the patient that there are risks and benefits of screening. Next slide. The European study, same thing. Men should obtain information on the risks and potential benefits of screening. Next slide. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network, the National Cancer Institute funds a group of uh, highly academic researcher-oriented cancer centers. Their recommendation, there are advantages and disadvantages to having a PSA test, and there is no right answer. 
Each man needs to make the decision. Next slide. The American Cancer Society. Men should have an opportunity to make an informed decision. There are uncertainties, risks, and potential benefits associated with prostate cancer screening. There's just no way around it. There's certainly good things, but there are also certainly bad things. Next slide. My view. I think that we have to intensively screen men, screen men who are at increased risk for prostate cancer, and we now know who those men are. And I think we, just, we have to stop ourselves from screening men who are at low risk for prostate cancer, and I think we now know who those are. Who is at high risk? We've heard it all morning. African American men, for sure. They need to be screened and they need to start early. For other men, I think the best data we have is shown on the next slide. This is a study from Scandinavia where men in their mid-40s had a PSA test. They were uh, that, that was frozen. We didn't know what PSA was because the, the test was drawn in 1970. The serum sample was frozen, but it was thawed out in, in the year 2010. And in the meantime, all of these men had become either 85 years of age or had died. Okay? And on the basis of what their serum PSA was when they were in their mid-40s, you could predict which of those men was going to have the aggressive form of prostate cancer. So look at that black line. These were men who were diagnosed with aggressive prostate cancer, and here was their chance of being diagnosed with prostate cancer on the basis of what their PSA was when they were in their mid-40s. So notice, all of these guys, this black line, had PSA values that were above the median. <coughs> so half the men had a PSA of 0.65 or less in their 40s. Virtually none of those men went on to die of prostate cancer. Maybe we shouldn't even bother screening those guys very aggressively. But on the other hand, the half of the men who had in their mid-40s the higher PSA values, now that's not elevated by the standard of four or whatever cut point we think of in 50 and 60 year old men. But since all of the action occurred in men who had PSA values above the median, above 0.65, those are the guys we should screen a lot. And I think we might need to screen them twice a year. Because screening them once a year is not good enough. As one of the speakers said, we don't cure every screen detected cancer. Because some of them are already spread. So we even need to screen some men more aggressively and some men less aggressively. Next slide. So as I sit here today, until we change the way we screen for prostate cancer, what do I think we need to do? We need to reduce the overall number of prostate cancer diagnosis. We need to reduce the burden, the anxiety, and the unnecessary treatments that afflict men even when we're told they have a small, low-grade, low-risk cancer. And we need to preserve or actually enhance the ability of PSA to be a good cancer marker. 